This morning, I want to speak on what I captioned, Handling Betrayal. Somebody say, Handling Betrayal. There are four important things I want to establish. Number one is that provided you are on earth, you cannot run away from being betrayed. If you are joining in life and you are going to do an amazing thing in the journey of life, betrayal must come. Number two is that betrayal comes from those that are closest to you. A stranger can never betray you. It takes someone very close to you to betray you. A stranger will never, can never betray you. A stranger, because the word betrayal is breaking of someone's trust. So you can only betray someone that has given you his trust or her trust. Number three, betrayal will either make or mar you. How you handle betrayal, it either makes or mar you. So that's why you must pay attention not to handle betrayal badly. Because whether you are made or you are marred by betrayal is dependent on how it is handled. How it is handled. Praise God. So betrayal is the act of exposing or delivering someone to an enemy through treachery or disloyalty. Now, when you hear that you delivered someone up to an enemy, there are people who are close to you. Provided the going is good, they are happy with you. But once there is a crack in your relationship with that person, everything you've told the person, the person go to, th to say it. Now, let me say this. If you are someone's friend, and the person in confidence has told you certain things, even if two of you had a fallout, or have fallout tomorrow, you must know that that thing he told you in confidence should stay in confidence. Should and must stay in confidence. So a lot of us think that, why will I betray my friend? No. Even when your friend is no longer that of your friend, you should not betray him or her. In fact, when you hear the person even saying the things that you told her, if you understand what solidarity and loyalty is, you should also keep your own. I read through the scriptures. Sir. I read through the scriptures. One day Jesus was speaking, he said, a good man, out of the abundance of his goodness, gives us good things. Can you help us put on all the fans? Always do that. I don't know why they are not here. Good man, out of the abundance of his goodness, gives out good things. So when you see someone betray you, that person is a reflection of who the person is on the inside. I read all through the scriptures and they shook me the wickedness of man. I was reading about Absalom. We can't exhaust lessons from that guy in three months. We can't exhaust it. Lessons from Absalom in three months. The son of David. And one thing about betrayal 
it, it begins with a wound. Number one is an offense. Then migrate to a wound. You know, when you hit your leg against a rock, that process of hitting your leg against a rock is an offense. All of a sudden, your leg opens up. It is a wound. If that wound is not treated, it becomes an infection. It becomes infectious. Then if that infection is not treated, it leads to death. So someone who now dies, died as a result of just hitting his leg against a rock. And then he opens up. And then from opening up, becomes a wound, gets infectious. From being infectious, the person, in some of the cases, the person is amputated. The leg of the person is amputated. Okay. Psalms chapter 41 verse 9. Quickly. Psalm 41 9. Psalms 41 verse 9. 41 verse 9. Even my own familiar friend. In whom I trusted. Who ate my bread. One thing about being betrayed is that anyone that betrays you is someone one way or the other that has gained from you. I discovered that the consequence of betrayal is death. Death. Not, not spiritual death. Physical death. Anyone who betrays others, don't worry, I'm going to do with my strength. Anyone who betrays another, the consequence is shortness of life. Shortness of life. The person, somebody might tell me that this person that has betrayed or I have betrayed someone, have I died? You might not understand that 10 to 20 to 30 years has been removed out of your life. Sometimes we think of people who betray us when we are the betrayers ourselves. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Gone. Has lifted up the next verse. He said, But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up. Be merciful to me. Raise me up. That my resort will speak for me. Luke chapter 22, verse number 19 to 23. Luke 22, 19. Luke 22, 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And gave it to them saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper. Saying, this cup is the new covenant. In my blood which is shed for you. But behold. The hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the son of man goes as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom the son of man will be betrayed. So there is a woe that accompanies every betrayer. A betrayer is woed. Even though Jesus was destined to die, Jesus was predestined to die. There has been a schedule from heaven that the Son of Man will die. But still, any man through which he dies, woe to that man. 
23. Then they began to ask questions among themselves. Which of them it was who would betray the master? They began to ask questions. Who will he be? Now, let me say this. Please sit down. Please sit down. Do you know that Jesus had 12 disciples? He only chose one person from his family. Out of the 12, he was only related to one. Judas. Judas was his cousin. Yes. The only family, Jesus said, how can I have disciples and a member of my family is not representing? So he went and picked one from his family. I mean, his own family. That was why Peter wasn't kissing Jesus. John wasn't kissing Jesus. There was only one person who could greet Jesus with a kiss. It was Judas. Because they were related. But has he not shocked you why the person who is the closest, who could come up with a token of kiss, is not the one who has used the same instrument of love to betray? Because they could not understand who Jesus was. They didn't know him. Just like an, ab an average Fulani person or China. That's what the Aborigine Jewish people, what their faces look like. He looked alike in their midst. So they needed someone that could identify him. He took on the posture of humility. They needed someone that would identify him. It was Judas they went to. If you read critically, every betrayer seeks a reward. <laughs> what did Judas look for? He needed the money to buy a field of blood, which he later didn't use. People betray to gain favor. People betray to look good. People betray to paint leadership terrible. If you don't want to be hot, please stay down. But if you must go up, you must be bruised. Scars, scars are signs of stars. Scars are emblems every star must carry. There is no star without scars. So that day, he took on the money. Just like people in a bid to gain favor, bastardize people's image. Let me tell you something. You know, when we think about sin, sin, every sin is not on the same pedestal. Yes. Every sin will lead a man to hell. But every sin is not on the same pedestal. No, no. It's like comparing homosexualism with fornication. Two of them lead a man to hell, but they are not on the same pedestal. There are some sins unto death. Betrayal is one of them. When I mean death, instant repercussions. How did I know? Oh, okay. Maybe we get to that. What everyone that went through betrayal, they always kill themselves by themselves. Yes. So he took on that money. I see people who are friends with people. And in order to be closer to authority or to someone, they sell their friends. Your dear friend, you are the one that led it, led it to a place she did an abortion. Yes. 
And now, after doing that abortion, you are the one that took that cloth of blood. And then you helped her wash it. And you saw she did it. If she doesn't want to tell anyone that, if you open your mouth to say it, it is betrayal. You know, when we talk about betrayal, you think betrayal is only when you say something bad against someone who is good. Even that person who is your friend, who has confided in you, that trust should not be broken. If at all you must tell someone, it must be someone who can help the person. I keep telling people, I say, people that get me information, this person said this against you. This person said this against you. So I ask them, how we are they so comfortable telling you? How we are people so comfortable? And I know that if you, are, if you reacted in defense, that person won't tell you, except you are making it up. How can they always tell you about a leadership? Against, 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 against. Then you have compromised loyalty. Jesus said, love every man. There is not one instruction in scripture to trust any man. You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> Should I say it again? Not one instruction in scripture to trust any man. You won't go to hell for not trusting people. You say, my heart is open. I'm a free person. No, no. Have you ever seen any road that goes to anywhere that is straight? You didn't hear what I said. Somebody is taking time to digest it. Have you seen any road that leads to anywhere in life that is straight? Even you, are you straight as a human being? If they put plum, you will see that your stomach is bigger than your laps. Or your buttock is bigger than. There is something God was teaching me lately. He showed me a scripture. He said, Jesus was speaking. He said, I send you as serpents, as wolves, as sheep, sorry, among the wolves. And in the same verse, he said, go and learn from the serpent. So how does God want us to learn from the serpent? He sends the wolf to learn from the serpent. That's how the wolf, that's how, sorry, that's how the dove can take on the wisdom of the serpent by learning from the serpent. So how does God send us a sheep among the wolf. Now pay attention. If you watch the difference between the sheep and the wolf, you can only know the difference through their mouth. If a sheep stays with wolves, you won't be able to know the difference except with their mouth. And their mouth is from here. That's why wolves are able to stay and bury their head in the midst of the sheep. And here the sheep won't know. The sheep will think that this is one of us. So one, one way to discover someone who is a wolf amongst you is by how the person talks. Whether carelessly, mistake, mistake, mis speaking out of mistakes, you must be able to pay attention to it. So you must master, have mastery of the wisdom of the serpent to navigate through this earth realm. And I discovered that the spirit of betrayer works hand in hand with the spirit of rebellion. The worst friend to keep is a rebellious friend. 
There are five things you see in a friend. That person shouldn't come close to you forever. One is envy. Envy. Length of years does not validate friendship. You might have known someone for 50 years. It doesn't validate friendship. What validates friendship is the person's disposition. The person's solidarity. I'm not telling you to live here to go and become the enemy of everybody you see. That's why this, this is a teaching. But I'm telling you not to sell yourself to everybody. It's not everybody that should know you. I've seen someone being paid under me by another man of God to gather information about me. This person is active in service, preaching the gospel, paying people. Thank God, not even many people can come close to me and get anything. I'm a close book. Like very close. Even immediately you call me, I begin to think you are recording me. So as a lady, you say, eh, that is sweet daddy. I say, don't say that. Because to me, every call is recorded. So that you tell me sweet daddy, I say, hey, mm. tomorrow you will say, two of us are doing something. You send me sweet dreams. I send you. Don't try it in your life forever. How was your night? Have you eaten today? Are you my wife? Am I not old enough to now we eat? Have you eaten today? Meaning what? Don't tell me that. Dear, do I look like your dear? Either I'm your pastor, I'm your prophet. Or you forget about it. How can you be coming here and you are calling me dear? Dear, as in how? From where to where? Tomorrow now you will publish. Look at our chat. Talk more of sending me red emoji, emoji hat. I will send you stinker that is terrible. In a very respectful way. Please don't send me this ever in your life again. And I will always put God bless you at the end. I will have my evidence on the day of your own evidence. Don't be too open, sir. A couple of us have been hurt over and again. Not because God wants it. But because we are so exposed. Our hearts are so exposed. Do you know what God told you? He said, guard your heart. Guard it. You guard a place with weapons. This heart is integral to your survival in this earth realm. Guard your heart because out of it flows issues. The heart is a place of decision. A place where matters are intellectually weighed and decisions are applied to every situation that may arise. Guard your heart because out of it flows issues of life. You are even sharing your mistakes as emblem. I say that length of years does not validate giving someone your trust. There are five, four major tests someone must go through. We saw the master do it. You must put them through these four major tests. The first one is that they have to go from being colleagues. Jesus had, in fact, he had 500. But let's say he had 120. He had 70. He had 12. He had 3. He had 1. 
who wrote Revelation? The one. Who should have the revelation of your life? One. But guess what? Don't look around your friend and say, I must have one who I tell everything. If the person has not proved loyalty, don't. And once loyalty is betrayed, pass the person through seven tests of trust again to reclaim this loyalty. There are seven acid tests that someone has to go through to reclaim the lost loyalty. Okay. Because what we are going to handle, I believe God, in the few weeks is being betrayed. How do I handle betrayer? And again, if you are the betrayer, how do I handle it? Wolves are known by how they talk. Wolves are known by the secrets they can keep. Wolves are known by backstabbing you at your back. Yes. Look at David. He had an opportunity to kill his father. In fact, he would have killed him and would have justified that God delivered his enemy. But there is something about loyalty. The Bible says if you choose not to be faithful, God is faithful. So loyalty is maintained regardless of the disposition of the other person. If I'm loyal to you, I'm loyal unto death. Even if you become my sworn enemy tomorrow, the only thing is that when my distance, I might distance myself from you. But the things you told me out of trust, nobody will know. So that day Saul was sleeping in the cave with his servant. And then David came and took a knife, was cutting the skirt of Saul. He cut it. He didn't wake up. He didn't cut the skirt just alone. He cut it, took the sword of Saul, took everything he had, and then went to the other part of the mountain. And then called on Saul, and Saul woke up. And then he lifted up the skirt of his clothes. He said, this day, he said, my father, my father, Saul woke up. He said, son, remember Saul was pursuing him to kill him. He said, this day the Lord had delivered you into my hand. We know loyalty when it looks like it is God that delivered you. Listen, it is not God who delivered you into someone's hand to betray the person. God delivered you into the person's hand so to test you. If David killed Saul, he would have lost the throne. God was watching his dispositions and attitude. Thank you. He said, moreover, my father, see, yes, see, the corner of your robe in my hand. The corner of your robe in my hand. He said, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand. And I have not sinned against you. Yet you haunt me. So loyalty is when the person is haunting you to kill you. And yet you choose not to give the person the very arsenal the person has thrown at you. You haunt my life to take it. Verse 12. Let the Lord judge between me and you. And let the Lord avenge me on you. But my hand, my hand, shall never be against you. Go on, 13. As a proverb of the ancient, wickedness proceeds from the wicked. Did you see it? But my hand shall never be against you. After whom has the king of Israel. Bring back verse 13. Okay. Get me to 15 quickly. 
Therefore, let the Lord be a judge between me and you. And see and plead my case. And deliver me out of your hand. I want to see what Saul said. When David was done speaking these words, Saul said, Is this your voice? My son, David. And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, You are more righteous than I am. For you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. He says, and you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. He said, for if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king this is when he anointed David. Now I know. He didn't know it before. It was a test of character that brought the kingship. Ah. Some of you listen very well. Listen critically. I was trying to say something and I left it. You know, when we talk about sin, gazing is on another level. You see betrayal. Is on another level. Mm. Mm. Betrayal. On another level. There are levels of things God cannot do if you're a betrayer. A couple of us are in church praying and fasting, asking God what is happening to us. In you lay all the field on earth. You might not go to a native doctor, but your heart is evil. You speak in tongues, but you speak in lies. Don't you know that the word Satan, Satan means a slanderer. The Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. For the accuser of bread when he's cast down. The word Satan does not mean a fornicator. It means someone that slanders. So we see people who slander in church and they don't know it is sin. Who is a slanderer? A slanderer is someone who speaks bad against someone. A slanderer is someone who betrays trust. A slanderer is someone who adds pepper, onion, and salt in what someone told the person. What it means is, it is as you are here, this is your friend. And your friend came to tell me, that you see a mecca as you have seen this guy this guy needs a house and I've been telling him to stop he's not prophecy I'm just giving an example I've been telling him to stop wasting money this guy said it in the right sense then I will carry that word and go and twist what this one has said. In most cases, I might twist it to this one. Say, that person, is that person your friend? Run away from this person. This person is evil. Look at what this person said. Even if I'm trying to explain that thing, knowing fully where this is not what it means, I have slandered the image of this person. And guess what? We have more of these ones in church. How do you feel when your friend is getting married? How do you feel when someone is beginning to succeed? What comes to your heart? Does it pain you? I've never had to go to check what any man of God is doing. He doesn't concern me. I celebrate people.
There is a man, full-fledged man, very, you know, old. Wherever he sees anyone, he must tell the person against me. He must sit down. There is nothing I did. I can't even pick out what I did to this man. Of course, he's by far older than I am. By far older than I am. More than 20 years older. So I went to the man. I said, did I do anything? Just let me know. This is what people say. This is what people say. And you know what I do? Oh, some of us are living a very carefree life. You are going to hurt yourself. What critically? Those who sworn to be your enemy. It's not possible for your friend to be close to them and not be infected. We are not telling you to be enemy to anyone. That's why you must understand this teaching now. So one day something happened, an incident came out. And it was a lady who has charts, naked pictures, all manner of videos against this man. And she was going to release it. In fact, even abortion had come out. It was simple. But I considered that when a man fails, it is not to the joy of the family. There are people that fuss with the man. So I called this lady. I begged her. She refused. I started using the principle of gifts. There are seven principles to get things achieved. The sixth one is the principle of gifts. Time will fail us to get into that. Paid her fees in a suit. Paid one, paid two. When she came to me, she told me, anyway, I got admission. I said, can I pay for that admission? She said, yes. I paid acceptance. Paid the school fees. Close to 300000 And in thanking me, I left her. Gave her pocket money. And then when she was now thanking me, I said, can I ask for a favor? She said, what was the favor? I said, can I have everything you have on this man? So we destroyed all of it. I said, you are going to take a communion before me that no other person hears it. So she knelt down and takes a communion. And guess what? The man doesn't know. Till date. And this is more than two years. No, don't clap. That is solidarity. You can never gain anything destroying any man. When you tarnish another person's image, even if the person has done wrong against you, you are not less than Satan. Because Satan is a slanderer. Who are you to destroy an image you have not created? My shadow has not heard it. If my wife hears this thing I say now, she will be too surprised a lot of things she doesn't know because I didn't even tell her. And some of you are already putting your head to say, who is that person? You think by saying the person is 20 years older than me, you can catch it. Hey, I hold them. That place is where I put the confusion in the church. That age part. Now I know, indeed, that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Please, become a loyal friend. 
this generation becomes great when we have loyalty, when we are people that are loyal to one another. Begin by keeping people's secrets. Wow. You know, I discovered Wednesday morning. I think time on Wednesday morning is different. It's always fly. Little thing it will be fly. As though we offended it. How do I handle betrayal? Number one, take it to the Lord. Psalms chapter 55 verse number one. How do I handle betrayal? Take it to the Lord. 55 verse one. He says, give ear to my prayer, O God. Do not hide yourself from my supplication. Go on, verse 2. He says, attend unto my ear. Attend to me. Hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. Because of the voice of the enemy. Because of the oppression of the wicked. For they bring down trouble upon me. And in wrath they hate me. Go on, verse 4. My heart is severely pain within me. And the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror has overwhelmed me. There are certain things people you are close to say against you. Horror will come on you. Horror will come upon you. You are wondering, is it possible someone like this can do this? He says, so I said, O oh Lord... That I had wings like a dove. I would have, I would fly and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander off, far off, and remain in the wilderness. He said, I will rest in my escape from the windy storm and from the tempest. Verse 12. 12. Quickly, 12. Verse 12. He said, For it is not an enemy who reproached me. For if it is an enemy, it is not an enemy who reproached me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide from it. But it was you, a man of my equal, my companion, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. We walked to the house of God. We took the same communion. We held our hands together. Oh, bring back verse 14. Give it to me in NIV. This part. With whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship. As we walked with the throng at the house of God. Verse 15. New King James. He said, let death seize them. Let them go down our life into hell. For wickedness is in their dwelling among them. As for me, I will call upon God. As for me, I will not retaliate. As for me, I will not revenge. As for me, I will not throw back the dart against you. I know... <laughs> What I have to do, my greatest weapon is to call on the name of the Lord. And I won't call on the name of the Lord for God to kill you or for you to die. I will call on the name of the Lord to save me. Do you know why? He was already wounded on the inside. He knew his heart had been bruised. He knew he was now bitter. He knew he was headed to a place where he might not forever recover. So he said, Lord, I don't know how you handle this person, but at least save me, for my heart is heavy. So how do I handle betrayal? Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Look at verse 17. It says, evening and morning, at noon I will pray. And cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace 
from the battle that was against me. For there we are many. Do you know? Many. They didn't start as many. It was that bosom friend that went and had affiliation and that allied himself with the enemies of David. Many against me. 19. God will hear. Yes. God will hear. Number two, handle it like Jesus handled his. How do I handle betrayal? Love. John 13 verse 1. Quickly. John 13 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, he should that he, sh he should depart from this world to his father. Having loved his own who we are in the world, he loved them to the end. Sir, loyalty is to the end. What did I say? I think I will end here. What did I say? He loved them to the end. That is what it means. Is even in death, he still loved them. Even when Peter betrayed him, he still loved him. Are you a loyal friend who loves unto death? That's why I keep telling people, anyone who is around you for what he gets from you is not stable. I didn't say the person shouldn't be around you. That the person should not have your trust. Before you build trust, to the point that you trust someone. Make sure the person stays because of you. Because of who, not because of what. He loved them unto death. That's loyalty. Loyalty means you did something. Instead of you suffering from me for, for it, then I, I put myself in the line and I take the hit without announcing it. Have you taken a bullet for your friend before? A bullet. Mm. This is an integral part of the church. It's not something we teach, we teach faith, holiness, powerful. But if we don't touch these character flaws a lot of people have, prayers will be hindered. A lot of people have prayed and they have not seen their prayers answered. Do you know I was in a place? A brother inflated the price of a brother's building. Told the brother he had built a duplex. And he said he had put in this duplex, only roofed, not plastered, over 70 million. A guy cried and was in his building site. And then he wanted to buy, take 9 million for roofing. He just returned from abroad. His bosom friend, his close friend. Nine million. I said, for what? The, the, the carcass of the roof had already been put. The guy said, this roof, we do it this way. As the man stepped out, his friend told me, he said, nah, guy. I said, I'm not guy, I'm a pastor. He said, now, nah, leave this thing. I go give you three million. Imagine someone was willing to give me three million. How much was he making? The guy let her roof that building with 2.7 million. A friend said nine million. When we talk about loyalty, you might think we are just talking about not speaking against or speaking against people. There are people that you are seated, even here, you can't be trusted in business. If your friend is abroad and sends you money, can you maintain loyalty and dignity and not touch the person's one cover? Loyalty is unto death. Loyalty is unto death. Jonathan and Saul, we are the only ones with weapons. 
in the entirety of Israel. Yet, Jonathan gave Saul, gave David his friend, his armor. He said, my armor is your armor. My shield is your shield. My buckler is your buckler. My weapon, your weapon. He was the one the father wanted to become a king. He said to the father, no, I don't have it in me to be king. It should be my brother. The Bible says when they made themselves, they hugged themselves because they loved themselves deeply and they were loyal to one another. I don't care the love you say you profess. If you are not loyal, you are not loved. If you are not loyal, you are not loving. Jonathan, what pained me was on the day he died, he was with his father. Because he would have had a special place in the kingdom. Be careful who you are aligned with. Because when God rises to kill Absalom, he won't leave you. If you have had an alignment with Absalom. He loved them unto death. Unto death. Become a loyal Christian. Become a truthful Christian. Simple thing you are buying, you are already inflating them. I have seen, see, see it. My, I am 36. What I have seen, a couple of people will not see it in 30 lifetimes. I have seen people who speak in tongues. Let me even shock you. Truth is more with Indian women than in church. Do you know why? They know. Then we get money here. Yeah, we see forgiveness and abuse mercy. We abuse mercy. Every day we come and lift up our what hand, we call it supposed holy hands that have been lifted to vanity. I've seen people speak in tongues and inflate prices. I've handled projects now. You hardly can see someone you can trust. My beloved son, who attends here, who, tell, who told me, I sell this. I sent someone. Go and meet with this person. And the person I sent. <laughs> like, listen. Don't trust someone because the person is close to me. Judas was close to Jesus. Ask me. Don't say, hmm, I've seen daddy. Hmm. Come and ask me first if we are five and six. There might be things I know you don't know. Don't do business because someone is close to me. Am I talking to somebody here? You are not understanding what I'm saying. The person went and connived. They will bring this. You write seven, they will bring two. You write ten, they will bring one. Several is over. And guess what? Every Sunday, this guy was coming out for tithes. What we have gone through, not many will survive it. That's why every day we detoxify our hearts. The injuries we've had is so deep that only those that are close will know. Betrayer has become common to us. And that's why the Holy Spirit told me, you want to go far? He said, don't expect so much from men. But there are people like Jonathan you will meet who will not be corrupt like others. Jonathan was willing to give his life for his friend David. I have people like that who are willing to lay down their life. Yes. You even see that among sisters and sisters. How do you explain? That someone came to marry your sister. And then all of a sudden the person saw you. And now said, hey, I won't marry your sister again. It's now you. And you are trying to quote all the laws on earth to say you should marry the person. You are crazy. You are crazy. And this is something the church doesn't want to handle. A couple of us are seated now. The quotation you have, you have deals with engineer to dupe another. And some of these people are family relatives of someone. A man 
was outside the nation sending money. He sent 77 million in cash and sent about 18 cars. He worked in Germany. He told me he worked in Germany for 19 years. He said, how will I be abroad forever? He gave his family money to buy two houses in a Tarale out. They snapped the house. One was 19 million. The other was 20 something million. Several years ago, by the time he came back, he couldn't see one car to go with. 77 million gone. His elder brother had taken all. He wept. He told me, and at this time, he had already left Germany. He had to relocate. He had already resigned. That's how he stayed here for another four years. Before he could travel to US. That's why when people choose not to deal with family, don't blame them. Ask why. <laughs> Sometimes your greatest family is outside your family. <laughs> blood is thicker than water. But blood is not thicker than trust. Trust is thicker than blood. Rise to your feet wherever you are. Handle it with love. Even though this man was to betray Jesus. If you read down, sir, that this place we are reading, Jesus still had to wash his feet. Jesus still had to wash his feet. Do you know how long I've been with this one? For several years. And he has stood all the test. So when we see people like this, we know there is hope. But it can only be one out of 1,000. And guess what? The power that wants to kill a man, we want to know who the man knows. They know if they come at me, uh, they will know they met a liar. So what they do is that they go through the side. Handle it like Jesus handled it. Handle this. I wanted to tell us the third point. This is where the teaching lies. Learn from it. But coming Wednesday, we are going to hear it. Learn from it. There are four parameters. Anytime you are betrayed, four things. You have to check to arrive at that this is betrayal. And then there are about nine lessons to learn from it. Nine lessons. To learn from every betrayer. One of them is that trust is not cheap. Trust is expensive. It must be earned. <laughs> it must be what? It must be earned. Even when God called me, God told me that I would take three oaths before him. Not oaths as in blood. Mm. No. He told me that I would make him three, three covenant promises. The first one is the covenant of purity that I won't defile myself with all these defilement, women, money, greed, all of these things. The second one is the oath of poverty. Yes. That oath of poverty is that I took a vow that everything I own belongs to him. That's why even in death, I will be buried in church. There is nothing I have in my name on earth. Nothing. Even the lands given to me, I changed it to church name. The third one, he said, you must take unto me a promise of confidentiality. Because people will come to you with things. So when I got married to my wife, I told her three of them. I said, there are people who come to me. If I don't tell you about this person, never ask. So if I've dealt with 100 persons, she knows only about 2%. How do I go to tell her this person? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you forget her. You blue and blue. Oh, yes. How? The person came and confided in me that I have HIV. How we see that another person will hear it? God will take my life the day I do it. It can't be broken. 
can be broken. Because I'm her husband, as her husband, she knows things about the family. But as a priest, the wife of the high priest doesn't go to the holiest of all with the high priest. There are things reserved for us alone. And she knows. In fact, the day she made a mistake to say, this one, this, is, this, one, this one is crying. What happened? The kind of eye I gave to her, she was apologizing for seven days. For seven days. She will still come and apologize. But thank God for her kind of person. Till death. He loved them unto death. Become a faithful friend that even if God looks from heaven, he will see the level of friendship he had between the Father and the Holy Ghost. Between Jesus and the Father. That Jesus was willing, when he saw the Father pained, he was willing to come to the earth and lay down his life so that his Father will not have to cry. When you see your friend go through challenges, do you go out of your way to provide solutions? Lord. And exchange is on the for our crown. The penalty of Hitrea is death. If you read very well, how this guy by name Absalom died. Sir, the son of David plotted to kill his father. Do you know what he was doing? He would take his father's wives and go to the upper chamber and sleep with them. Contempt. That spirit that is telling you to revenge is not from God. He would take his father's he began with offense. You remember who Absalom is? The brother of who? The brother of who? Tama. That's how the offense began. Because he begins with offense. And then it becomes a wound. Before you know it, it leads to death. So meet it at the offense stage. If it is still at the wound stage, there is a level of infection a man has in his leg. And he's about to kill the man. What? What? Do they suggest you cut off the leg, you chop it off so it doesn't affect every part of your body? The Bible says, Guard your heart because out of your heart flows issues of life. Bow down your head wherever you are.